If you think about it, ammunition has barely changed in over 150 years. A little bit better powders or different things like that, but it's basically the same concept. These companies are seeking to change that. This claims to be the plastic ammo of the future. Let's go through each one. First, this is true velocity ammo. They have, you know, huge military contracts and lots of investment done into this thing. It takes the brass from your typical case and replaces it with a, some kind of polymer, plastic, whatever. And it promises to give much more accurate ammunition because it, it, they can manufacture it with much tighter tolerances and things. They can get more consistent neck tension. That's why they're calling it true velocity. I'll believe it when I see it in these tests. Next, this is Inceptor, A-R-X. This is a typical brass case, but that bullet is made of a polymer with like some tiny little metal flakes in there, it seems. And this promises to be awesome for self-defense, where you could make a, you know, a big hole in something that you're shooting, but then not penetrate through drywall on the other side, making it much safer for home defense. Then, this is your typical shotgun, 12-gauge shotgun sh slug, but inside it, that slug is made of, again, polymer or plastic. It can make a huge hole and shoot way faster than a typical shotgun slug, but again, not penetrate, pa penetrate past where you want it to go for personal defense. Then, the one that maybe I'm most excited to try. This is called SimX Ammunition, and it looks totally normal, right? But under that jacket of the bullet, the jacket that we see on the outside on the inside, is not lead, like typical, it's polymer. And by doing that, they say this shoots at double the speed of 9mm with less recoil and that your muzzle flip when you're shooting, it's not bouncing up the barrel and so you can stay on target and shoot much faster. That could promise to be a significant innovation for handguns, but all of that is the marketing promise. I want to test it myself, and so that's why we're out here today. But first, today's video is sponsored by Tiege Hanley. Tiege Hanley is skincare for men that's easy to use. It will clearly label on it. You know, put this on an AM, PM, has your scrub, everything you'll need. The goal is, look, we're guys, sometimes we just don't care about things like this, but the goal is to not look like Quasimodo when your wife looks like a beautiful Georgia peach. And so you gotta take care of yourself and your skin if you don't want this to happen to you. So I started using Tej Hanley, and you can too. And because Tej is sponsoring today's video, you, my viewers, get a great deal. Just click the first link in the description, and that will give you 30% off your first box plus a free gift. Don't miss out on this amazing deal. Just click that link and get started today. So the goal is we're testing all this. We don't want to just see if it's cool. We want to see if it would actually take a place in my shooting. And our first contender is from Slapshot USA. This is the, it's two and three quarter inch shot shell. It's the PHD 250. PHD is for personal home defense. And so that is that plastic slug in there. Now, for reference, a typical shotgun, you know, bird shot, whatever, might shoot 1,400 feet per second. This thing shoots at 2,900 feet per second. This is the fastest shotgun slug in the world, but this isn't even their fastest. They're actually coming out with a new version called the SS4K that shoots 4,000 100 feet per second. That's way faster than even a typical rifle round. First of all, let's just take a shot here on the chronograph. Now, this is supposed to be shot in a rifled shotgun, obviously. This is not here, um, so we're gonna see horrible accuracy, but let's just take a shot first and see what it feels like. I'm curious what the recoil is going to be because the projectile is so light. I'm just gonna aim out, out into the desert. Okay, the recoil is like definitely lighter. Okay, let's do the interesting one now. 
I got a paver set up over there. Let's see what a plastic slug is going to do to a paver. Out of this. Oh, yeah. Snapped it. Now the real test. So it's got power. The recoil is less. And so we see a couple things that we could say, this is better. But what it promises to do is yes, have that power, but then not penetrate too far. So we're gonna shoot a milk jug. And in theory here, we should be able to just blow up the first milk jug and leave the, the ones behind it intact. That I'd like to see myself. Let's check it out. Okay, indeed, that is impressive. So it destroyed the first milk jug and you'll see it, some, something must have knocked the cap off the second one, but the others are really intact here. That's pretty cool. Okay, so verdict on the first test, is that something that I would actually use? Honestly, yeah, if I was using a shotgun for home defense, that just seems better. It still has the knockdown power, in fact, maybe more given the speed, but we're not going to over penetrate. It's not crazy expensive. I would call that one an absolute win. Plastic ammo of the future is looking pretty good. Up next is true velocity ammo. Now, since, you know, precision rifle and hunting is my game, this one is very interesting. So for reference, it's pretty obvious that this is something quite different. There's no brass here on the case. It's plastic all on here. But you can see quickly that it's not totally plastic or whatever this is, some kind of polymer fancy. I'm calling everything plastic, but I'm sure it's not. Um, but it still has a metal head here and you'll see inside, it's really just the sidewalls that we've turned into this plastic. Now it is very rigid. So why would anyone want to do this? Well, what I thought when I saw it is, hey, plastic, it's way cheaper than brass. This could save us some money. What the military saw is, ooh, this could reduce the weight of the ammunition by about 25 or 30%, depending on the load. And it does do that. It doesn't really make a difference for a hunter if you're only carrying a few shots, but if you have to carry pallets of it around the world, that could be a huge innovation. Now they have like 300 patents, way too much money at this company. They're, you know, sponsoring NASCAR, have their, you know, name on things, which I don't really understand because their media person won't even reply to me. And I'm like, well, we reach kind of a lot of gun enthusiasts. You'd think you'd want to reply to that if they're spending so much money on advertising. But let's test this thing. I want to see if the promise is true. The promise here is that the velocity is, well, true, that they're going to have a smaller deviation between each shot in the velocity. Now, if you're a long range shooter, that makes a huge difference. On good factory ammunition, you might see a standard deviation in the, in the feet per second between shots of, let's say, 12, maybe 20. That's good factory ammunition. So let's see how this stuff compares. Okay, look at that. It looks so weird in a magazine. Uh, to have that plastic. We're gonna shoot a few shots here and see what kind of standard deviation. Now, I don't even have a scope on this. The accuracy is gonna be terrible because it's a Mossberg. Anyway, we're just testing how true that velocity really is. So what's the verdict on true velocity ammo? I mean, the extreme spread was really low on this. It was awesome to see how well it shot over that first string of 10 shots. But is it something I would buy? No, I wouldn't. Because you see the, co the cost of brass is 67% of the total cartridge. And so seeing plastic, you say, wow, we could save a lot. But actually this is a little bit more expensive than typical rifle am am uh, ammo. And now you don't get the brass that you can reuse. So you add the next row to that and you can see, oh, if we reuse our brass, the cost of reloading ammo can be very, very low. And so for the average person like you and me, we want that brass. Even if you're not a reloader, somebody else is going to want it. It has value. Now the military doesn't reload ammo. And so it makes perfect sense for them, lighter weight and they don't reload it. So that's great. For consumers like you and me, this isn't the only way to get you know, very reliable, small SDs. 
reloaders can really do something very similar. This, you know, we can get to those same levels. With factory ammo, this is very good factory ammo, you know, and for hunting something like that, yeah, it would absolutely do the job if you don't care about the price and you don't want the brass. True velocity is interesting, but I don't think it's for me. This is Sim X ammo. I think this is going to be the coolest part of the video because this has some incredible promises. On the first look, you see a brass case, you see a regular jacketed bullet, but inside that jacket, we'd normally have lead. But this uses a revolutionary use of non-toxic viscoelastic and kinetic ceramic bullet core material. At least that's what the marketing says. What they're telling me is, we're gonna see about 50% less muzzle flip, a bullet from a regular nine millimeter handgun that's going double the speed, and instead of just having about 350 foot-pounds of energy from a typical nine millimeter handgun, this stuff says it'll produce 500 foot-pounds of energy for handguns to shoot faster with more power and less recoil could be really cool. And so we're gonna try this out. Actually, I'm not gonna try this one out, Emily is. <laughs> Emily is very interested in the, in the defense stuff. And because, you know, maybe has a little bit weaker wrist, um, I'm curious to see what the muzzle flip looks like. So in this magazine, we have three shots of the Simex, and then three shots of typical lead, you know, defensive ammo and then three more shots of the Simex. So three new, three old, three new. So we're, I'm curious to see if we can tell in the video how big of a difference this matters. I see the bad guy right in front of me. Did you notice the recoil change? I'll pay attention. No, feels the same. Okay, now three of the new stuff. I don't know. They're all the same. You can't tell any difference? All right, I want to try it for myself. I got four of the Simex and then four just typical Hornady self-defense rounds. Oh, that's way light. Yeah, there is a difference. I mean, you can feel it, but it is a lot less dramatic than I expected it to be. But there, I mean, you can feel the reduction in recoil. It's, I thought it was gonna be a dramatic difference though. Okay, now let's try the milk jugs again. In theory, we'll wanna go through one milk jug and not the other. But first, let's shoot that paver to see what kind of power we got. This is with the new Simex ammo. Yeah, okay. Oh no, look. Yeah, we still had pieces go through. Yeah, so the jacket got caught in the second milk jug. The test that I've seen Simex do, if you check on their website, they'll like shoot a watermelon and it'll just obliterate the watermelon and then a piece of drywall behind it and nothing will hit the drywall. Apparently it'll still go through a milk jug here, but the key is that it's really breaking apart very fast and not over penetrating. So the verdict on Simex ammo, I think is really cool. There is a difference in recoil. I wouldn't call it giant or dramatic. Maybe somebody who shoots a lot more pistol than me might notice it a little bit more. But for me, it was a pretty moderate difference in what I could feel. But for self-defense ammo, now we're shooting way, way, way faster, um, and it's not going to over penetrate as much. Could I see this going in my personal defense handgun? Absolutely, I think it's a really cool innovation. There is one more that we should look at in terms of self-defense ammunition, and that's this one that's kind of taking a polymer in the bullet, but also it says it, says it has a copper matrix it looks like it has like, you know, almost 3D printed, but just kind of a mix of, um, of polymer. And you can just see little specks of, I think that's metal in there. So I think that's the copper polymer matrix they're talking about. Now this Inceptor ARX, the real interesting thing is these grooves on the bullet. 
the idea is that they're pushing the material out laterally as much as, pro as possible for that terminal performance. Um, and that geometry of that grooves is really what they're proud of, trying to really expand things as you shoot. So I don't know that we're gonna see a huge difference here, but I did just wanna try this one because it is quite a bit louder. Okay, we found a backfire fan driving past. <laughs> Pretty cool. So what's the verdict on the plastic ammo of the future in general? Could I see myself putting Simex ammo in my personal defense handgun? Absolutely, I think it'd make my family safer in the case of a home intrusion to not have that over penetration. I like that it's shooting faster, even though with a lighter bullet, and so I think we'd get similar terminal performance. I think that's a win. Could I see myself switching to true velocity ammo for my rifles and hunting? Probably not. I think the increased cost plus not having the brass to reload is too big of something to overcome. But if I were stuck on factory ammo, I do think it's pretty good factory ammo. And the low SDs is very impressive. Could I see myself using a plastic shotgun slug? For me, no, because I don't use a shotgun for home defense. But I do think it's an awesome innovation. The plastic ammo of the, ammo of the future looks pretty awesome. Be sure to check out Tiege Hanley, our sponsor, and thanks for clicking on a Backfire video.